Our next guest played tight end alongside Dennis Pitta in that Max Hall offense that won 32 games over three years. Also the player who caught the game-winning touchdown to beat Utah in overtime during the clash of 2009. It is a pleasure to welcome Andrew George to the Wise Guys live from Colorado. Andrew, hey, we've we've been waiting months to have you on the show, and, and tonight is the night. Thanks for being with us. Oh, no problem, man. Thanks for having me on, guys. Part of the reason we've had to dance around your schedule is uh, you've been coaching your son's nine-year-old football league, football team, right? Have I got that yeah, right? Yeah, 12, 12 year olds. 12 year olds. How's that going? Uh, you know, I think I'm finding out that I'm a failed coach. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to say, it was a lot easier playing than it is coaching a seventh grade football team. But we actually, they went to the Super Bowl last year. And so they got bumped up to the upper division. Yeah. And we're just, we're getting creamed this year. Really? It, it, it's <laughs> funny because all, all of you guys, all of your generate, like, so Nixon and, and Keel. Those guys, their kids are on the same team, and they're, they're yeah. coaching. So we do a debrief with Nixon every week and on um, their team. You land in, my land in, which you know well. Um, yeah. He's got a team. His team's undefeated. Coach Fowl, we call him All Coach right. McVay. Ogletree's got a they're team. They're undefeated. Ogletree's got a team. He's coaching. They're un, I think they've got one loss now. All Only you guys, in 20 years, BYU's going to be great. All of you guys, you guys are, are, be are, here. are <laughs> like up to your elbows coaching – youth football now which i think is great because you're just raising up the next generation to yeah. come i said 20 years 10 years they'll all yeah. be here in 10 years yeah, they'll be here in 10 years how's your guy is he good right. is he ready to come is he you gonna know be what? he's actually a pretty darn good football player yeah. I, uh, I in fact i saw uh kelly papinga a couple of weeks ago and and i said i, I was like he was asking me the same question i'm like actually he you know he so my kid is way, he's more physical at this age than I ever was. Like I was a minimum play kid at this age and yeah. my son's like one of the best on the team, really physical. And I was like, man, he, he might play for you someday, wherever you are. He might, he might play be an edge rusher or something. That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, let's, let's begin uh, our football discussion with the, your reaction to the Arkansas game, what you saw, what you liked, what you didn't like and, and what needs to be done. Oh man. Um, you know, it was a hard game to watch. I think everybody kind of felt that way. I think there's a lot of positives of what we did offensively. Uh, I think we all we all kind of knew this, but Puka Nakua is just – he's a guy, man. I mean, it, he he uh, make play, makes plays all over the field, whether it's uh, handing off those fly sweeps or, or catching a, a simple smoke screen and, and taking it, you know. He, he is a complete difference maker for our offense. So it's good to have him looking like he's pretty darn healthy. Um, you know, I, I'd still love to see us run the ball, uh, with more consistency. I think that's a frustration for everybody, especially given, you know, um, really the, uh, the expectations, I guess, for yeah. all of our linemen this year. Um, cause I think we've got a great group of linemen. So I, I wish we would stick with the run a little bit more and, and, uh, try and find some ways to gain yards on the ground. Cause it'll only open up the pass a little bit more, but, uh, Jaron's impressive offensively. Uh, just incredibly efficient, right? I mean, he's, he doesn't turn the ball over for the most part, right? He's one of the best in the nation at that. Um, so offensively, they're excellent. Um, I wish, uh, you know, former tight end, so I got to say I wish they would throw the ball to the tight ends a little bit more. Sure. Um, but they, they utilize the tight ends differently than, than uh, we did in our offense with, with Coach and I. It's, it's a much different scheme. Um, but I'd, I'd love to see them really put some pressure on the tight ends to win on some routes. Uh, and really develop those skills there. Um, defensively, I mean, obviously giving up over 50 points, that's that's frustrating. We all kind of saw that. And uh, I'm not really sure what the answer is uh, defensively. I, I mean, we're having a hard time stopping the run. So um, I don't know. I, it's, I know the guys will figure it out. And I, I think that's kind of what I take away from it. And I try and keep perspective is nobody cares more than Kalani and his crew. So uh, I know they're working like crazy to try and fix uh, some of the issues they have. I mean, third down conversion was was a, a massive problem, I know, defensively. I mean, they couldn't get off the field. And I, I think probably the worst one was that one, I think it was right before half, where we missed like five tackles. on Yeah, the third, and, ele third and 11 and a chance to get yeah. off the field, right? Yeah. With, you, with, you the right, the with the right your... call defensively. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. You have the right call defensively. You've got the, you know, you've got a sack. And you, you have him in your arms with three different guys, and he managed just to escape. I mean, credit to him. He's a, a big, tough guy. But 
at the same time. I mean, we make that play, they punt it away, then we have a chance to get points before halftime. And right. maybe it's a different game after that. Maybe not. I don't know. But, it, it was funny because um, Nick Nixon was talking to us today, and he's like, you know, you got your scout. You know that dude is 240-plus pounds. So when you're coming in, you don't hit him up in the shoulders. He says you drive right through his waist with your shoulder pad just like you would a tight end or a running back. You've got to tackle him like a real player when he's that big. And so he was really disappointed that everybody kind of came in and hit him high. When yeah. you watch film of that guy and all season long, he's just bouncing off dudes and making plays like that. So, yeah, you got, you've got to know you got to know your scout and you got to know what you're supposed to do when you get there and arrive at the ball um, and, and tackle him in a different way when he's that big. This defense didn't have an identity, so they go to a Liberty. What, what do you want to see them come home from Liberty with having gotten done? We know Kalani's more involved in the defensive side this week, and, and some changes have been made, but they're going to go to Liberty and, and, and exercise whatever they've done. What, when, what identity do you want to see from the defense moving forward? Uh, third down, number one. I mean, Kalani said that, you know, since the end of the game. Uh, third down is is the down defensively that yeah. you have to be excellent at if you're going to win a football game. So I'd love to see a much better uh, percentage third down getting off the field. I think it starts with that. I think that's completely accurate. I mean, we're talking about stopping the run. Um, I, we haven't been great at that this year. I'd love to see us be able to stop the run against an opponent like Liberty who – you know, they're still a quality team, but they're they're not going to have the guys up front that somebody like Arkansas does. Uh, and so I'd love to see us be able to, to manage the run a little bit better. I think we've been honestly pretty darn good uh, in the secondary for the most part. Um, you know, you don't see a, a lot of teams getting behind us and, and big plays that way. It just yeah. seems like, you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I would love to see more pressure on the quarterback. I, I think that's primarily uh, – uh, what's going to get us off a third down. I, I think we just saw too many times with Arkansas. He's got a lot of time to throw yeah. um, and, and with other teams, right? When you have that much time to throw and we're playing any kind of zone defense, just knowing as a player, uh, anytime I, I loved seeing zone defense because I felt like uh, being able to read what they were doing and sitting zone holds. And if our quarterback has time to throw it, we're going to exploit that zone defense all day. So, um, so yeah, and finding ways to uh, get pressure on the quarterback for sure. You know, D uh, Dave wrote an article this week in the Deseret News, and like people were going off on him, like, "Oh, what are you talking about?" And I, like, I read the article, and I'm like, "Man, he's exactly right on this." I like when Blaine reads my yeah, stuff because I always <laughs> read his stuff. By the way, every week, but I was like, "No, he's exactly right." And then he told me today that people were like just going off on him because he suggested, you know, everybody's going off about BYU's defense. Because of the 23 of 31 third down conversions over the last two games, which rightly so, BYU's got to get off the field. He and I have been talking, I've been going, it's, but it's not way more times. Like instead of being 12 of 15, if BYU holds them to 8 of 15, so they get four more stops, in college football today, it's about scoring points. And you just look at the top 25. Look at that Alabama-Tennessee game. Look at Oklahoma-Kansas. Yep. Like In games between ranked teams, losing teams are scoring 40. And the winner scoring yeah. mid forties or fifty, and so Dave wrote this article about the trend in college football being production, and and he pointed out that fifteen P five games over the weekend had an average point total of seventy nine point four points. In the yeah. Big Twelve, which is the league that BYU is joining, Kansas and Oklahoma combined for ninety four points. Oklahoma yeah. State and, T and TCU combined for eighty three. So did Baylor and West Virginia. So, so the question he posed in the article was. Sure, BYU's got to get somewhat better on, on defense, but should they be focusing on being way more explosive offensively? And is that the trend? And is BYU going to have to score a lot more points and be more prolific offensively to compete in that league? That's a great question. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think the Alabama-Tennessee game is a, a prime example. I mean, those are two excellent defenses, and they're getting the score run up on both sides. So, I mean, I think there's a, a point to be made there that it's not all about being able to stop your opponent. It's about being able to keep up with them offensively. And so, and, and but I mean, I can remember games when, uh, you know, when I played, it was kind of, uh, you know, those games where you felt like offensively, we had to score every series if we were going to have a chance, just because, you know, for whatever reason, the opposing offense had a beat on our defense that day. And those things happen. And, and some, there were some games when we couldn't do a thing offensively that we wanted to do. And, the defense had to step up. So 
I think it kind of can go both ways. And, and I know everybody's frustrated about the over 50, you know, giving up over 50 points. And, and, uh, and rightly so, you're not going to win a lot of games if you are giving up that much. But um, if you can't match uh, what they're doing, definitely on the other side of the ball, um, offense for offense, I mean, the chance isn't there for you to win. I think that's a valid point, though. I went out on a limb, <laughs> and I said, if the defense is going to allow 52 points, the offense has to score 53 to win the game. It's basic math. Right. Yeah. The team with the most points wins, and Jim McMahon said the same thing. He said, hey, if they're going to score 49, let's go score 50 because right. the object is win the game. It, Arkansas, it looked like they could have cared less how many yards Hall got and how many touchdowns. They had 52 points. That's what they came to get, more points than BYU. And then they and then they and they went home. Yeah, and I and I submitted Andrew that like, if BYU doesn't have a snapped ball that's not supposed to be snapped on fourth down that gets snapped, right. and they turn it over and they scored there, and if BYU doesn't throw a pick on the very next, because remember they were twenty one seventeen in the lead with six minutes to go in the half, and they had two turnovers and Arkansas scored on both of those and then BYU never could catch them, so I would say they wouldn't have had, they didn't need to score fifty two they needed to not turn it over and score. 42 or 44 and they win the yeah, game they, they got how many points i think they got 14 points off of turnovers right uh, and BYU Justin, got zero. Was it that first half yeah first yeah. half first half alone 14 points off of turnovers and so it, it so yeah okay points matter but i think it's it's also about who makes the fewest mistakes T turnover margin pretty right clear yeah pretty clear that our arkansas made far fewer, fewer mistakes than we did in and we were probably pressing as an offense as well because we felt like we had to, to keep up every series. But we were also doing some damage to our defense by turning the ball over, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, Dave, Dave pointed out that in this article, at TCU, when they're in the Mountain West, um, their defense was one of the top in the country. You, you played TCU a, a yeah. couple of times and always known Gary Patterson for putting these great defenses out. And then really pretty explosive offenses with Jeremy Curley and that whole crew, right? Yeah. Um mm -hmm. But they got into the Big 12, and they, they couldn't compete. And Gary just, like, scrapped it and said, we need to go to the spread. we got to score a lot more points if we're, if we're going to. And they haven't been like they were in the Mountain West defensively um, for a long time. And, and they're really good teams that have competed for Big 12 championships or teams that go out and score 40 a game. Yeah. And, you know, Dave, Dave put that data in. Um, it really is an interesting trend. We, I mean, we're looking at that Utah-USC game. Like, neither team could stop the other team at all. And it ends up that Utah goes for two at the end of the game, win or lose, and they win by one. Both teams are in the 40s and both have like 575 yards of total offense. And I don't know. It is the trend. We're seeing it. Do you like that trend? Are you a fan of offensive football? Or would you like to see defenses make a resurgence and see more defense in football? Well, I think I think part of that trend, too, is is probably the rules are in football are definitely slanted towards the offense. Yeah. Uh, and so I think I think that's a big piece of it as well. I mean, you, you see it in the NFL now, too, where, you know, it's it's uh, everything's about protecting the quarterback and teams are getting kind of, you know, there's there's a lot of rules, pass interference rules. And there's there's a lot in place that is supposed that games are more exciting when there's more offense. And I, and I think probably the rules makers, they know this. <laughs> and so uh, so I'm OK with excellent offense back and forth game. Um I just I just want the team that I'm rooting for to come out on top. So that's you know that's really what I care about. Exactly. And but but I think uh, uh, you know Tuiaki made a great point. Uh, I think it was today or last night. I can't remember what it was. Um, just that uh, uh, you know he his his other fifty point game that was given up in his tenure uh, they won. They beat Toledo, right? And that's so, right. And nobody really is. I mean, they may have been kind of frustrated. Oh, you gave up 50 points to Toledo, but we won the game, right? And so it's not as heavily talked about as this one against against Arkansas, where we lost. We're on the we're on the losing end of it. So I don't, I'm I'm okay with with the, the fast paced, uh, high octane offenses that you're seeing nowadays. I mean, I, I was an offensive player. I get it. But you get it. Oddly enough, I am the defensive coordinator on our <laughs> ah! seventh grade football team. So I'm having to learn a lot this year. And maybe this is why we're getting beat. You got an offensive guy being the DC. So that's that's awesome. Bluesville, one of our followers says, so if this is the trend, are better athletes being channeled onto the offensive side of the ball? You know, are the kids are the better athletes as youth going, I'm gonna play wide receiver, I wanna do this, you know, that kind of thing. Um, remember Tyler Algier and Bluesville points this out, was playing linebacker for BYU 
Then he moved over to running back and became a star at running back yeah. and now is the starting running back for the Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, very. I, I think there's some validity to that, to that as well. Former BYU tight end Andrew George is on the Wise Guys tonight, live from Colorado. You played three years with Max Hall at quarterback, won 32 games. BYU went 11 and 2 in 07, 10 and 3 in 08, and 11 and 2 in 09. Which of those three teams do you think would defeat the other two? Oh, man. That's a great question. Um, I. Hmm. I got to say 2009. That was your best Nixon's group? Nixon's oh, going to be mad about that. Yeah, because he was gone right. by then, right? He wasn't on that team. Uh, Wait, no, was, Kellen, what, was Kellen on the 09 team, or was he only old? Uh, no, it, Kellen was gone by 09. So, Kellen so, was 09, so I mean, you're, you're you know, t- saying, you know, as soon, as soon as we got rid of Kellen and Nixon, <laughs> you guys were really better. Is that what you're saying? Together. <laughs> well, and, and I think purely from an offensive standpoint, I would say our our defense probably that uh, 08, 07 or 08 defense was probably our better defense. Uh, now Matt Bauman and Brett Denny are going to be mad at me. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, but I think our 09 offense was special for a couple of reasons. I think Max uh, that 08 season kind of ended with kind of a sour taste in our mouth, right? We lost to Utah and then we lose our bowl game, and yeah. and. Uh, I think it became very clear offensively where the ball was going in 2008, and it became a little easier for defenses to key on what we were trying to do. I mean, uh, Austin Colley, incredible player, and a lot of balls went his way. And if you watch that 08 Utah game, uh, they sat a safety over the top on him, and that's when Max kind of got himself in some trouble in that game. Uh, 2009, I I just thought Max spread the ball around really, really well, not to mention we got Manasse Tonga back that year. Mm -hmm. And Noss, I mean, doesn't get enough credit for how good he is. But having uh, Noss and having Harvey in the backfield, I mean, those two, uh, absolutely incredible. The things they would do, not only uh, blocking, but receiving, just their their knowledge of the game, their feel for pass protection – um, I think we did some, some incredible things. Um, and then I think it, we were hard to defend with our backs and our tight ends and the formations and things we would do. So, uh, I think at least offensively, we were much more well-rounded in 2009 than when we were, we were in 2008 or 2007. Well, plus you beat Oklahoma and then you beat the Utes. Yeah. That's right. It's, 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 it's funny you mentioned Manasseh cause people don't remember like he and Fui and those guys, Manasseh. Like, I remember watching highlights of him pass protecting. Like, yes. the other team would bring up blitz and bring a backer. And the backer would run, like, be going full speed downhill. And Manasseh would kind of hide behind the guard and then step out in that gap and literally blow them up. Like, literally <laughs> knock them onto their backs. And they would just get up and shake their heads. It was like running into a cement pillar back there. <laughs> and that's one of the reasons that, that when you say getting Manasseh back – that Max was able to stand in there a lot um, and deliver strikes was because Manasse was just killing people in pass protection that year. Absolutely. He was, he was nails, man. He was, he was so good. And actually funny story about that. I did a workout with the Patriots when I was still, uh, you know, my short, short career, but uh, um, one of the scouts I was talking to, and he was a corner, he was a defensive back, I think with UCLA. And he was like, He's like, man, he's like, where did you guys get all those running backs? You had Unga and Tonga and, and you know, and Bakapuna. You know, he's like, <laughs> I, he's like, I used to have to tackle these guys. And he's like, it was miserable the entire game. And so, you know, there were teams that felt that exact same way. It's like, man, they had, they had to tackle and, and, and try and blitz against those guys. They didn't have a prayer. <laughs> <laughs> hey, how happy were you to see Dennis Pitta inducted into the Hall of Fame last month? Oh man, he's deserving, right? I, I mean, it's it's incredible. I'm just glad he finished his degree so that he they could uh, induct him. In. <laughs> it took a while. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, he's uh, obviously Dennis is incredibly deserving, and I think uh, one of the best parts about uh, Dennis, you know, being a you know somebody who I, I say play alongside. Some people say play behind. I, I prefer alongside. Sure. We played uh, a lot of you know, twelve personnel. We teach people on the right. show one back. Two tight ends. You even played a lot of twenty-two personnel when you and Dennis were there. Two we backs did. and two tight ends, because we were that good at that position with the, with the two of you out there. We did, and I, you know, um, we there was uh, obviously Dallin uh, Dallin Holker, Holker, right? He just he just transferred out of yeah. the program. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, 
after that 2008 season, I, I wanted to transfer out of the program. Uh, it just felt like I could maybe have my skills utilized somewhere, somewhere else better and, and have a better opportunity to maybe get to the next level and those types of things. Um, it wasn't as easy to transfer back then, and it just wasn't going to be an option. So obviously, I, I stuck around. Uh, and Dennis was a guy that just, um, even though you know he he had more of the, the the catches and and kind of the 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 fame and notoriety and all those things, he was an incredible teammate, and he's a great friend. Uh, he, we were roommates on the road. I, I mean, that 2009 season was special in many ways. And really glad that I didn't leave the program so that I could experience that 09 season. But part of the reason why that 09 season was so great is because uh, of who Dennis is, right? Yeah. And uh, had a great time playing alongside him and obviously very deserving with, with all of his staff and all that, but even better person. Yeah, so him hogging everything and, and talking to his brother-in-law off the field, Max, saying you got to throw it to me, you got to throw it to me. Somehow you still got 70 receptions and 827 yards and 11 touchdowns, even though Dennis was being a hog. It was a family situation you had to fight through. <laughs> that's, that's right. You know, I, I, uh, I didn't marry into the right family. It's okay. <laughs> so when you guys are over on the sidelines, uh, whether it's Collie or Dennis, usually Dennis or Harvey or whatever, who's in Max's ear to say, hey, look, I'm open, like all the time? Oh, man. Uh, you, you mean back when we played, not, yeah. not like, these days. Who was, the, who was the one that was like badgering Max the most saying, dude, I'm wide open. Was it Austin? Was it you? Was it Dennis? Uh, it, uh, love him, but it was Austin. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the show a couple of weeks ago. And we talked about that. Yes, we He did. was always wide open. I guess, you he know? was, he was always open, but that's what made Austin great too. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, he always thought and, that he could beat whoever he was playing against. And I, and, and he was very vocal about it. Right. And I, and I think that's what, why our offense was as great as it was for those few years, because Austin wasn't the only one like here I am with with only a fraction of the catches. And I think I can beat whoever, you know, I'm playing against. And Dennis felt the same way. And Harvey's thinking I can hand me the ball. I'll get, you know, I, I think we had a bunch of guys like that who just had this confidence level that just permeated the entire team. And we just knew that we were going to be really difficult to stop. And so. So, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't say that in a bad way about Austin. It's just, you know, he had that confidence. I think yeah. we all had that confidence, and it's what made us great. Yeah, b -Lo, who we work with, Brian Logan, always says, I love receivers that play with a little swag, like their little confidence. And that group definitely had that confidence. So they played fast, and uh, and guys that play confident and fast win their matchups. That's, it was really fun to watch the three of you out there together. Hey, Dave talked to, uh, to Dennis uh, and he knew you were going to come on. And, and he told Dave, hey, make sure you ask um, Drew about um, what song the two of you guys would listen to before every game. <laughs> All right. What, what was, was it? it? So, so funny. So we would ride. I, I drove Dennis. We drove together, I should say. But I, yeah. I drove every away game to the airport, right, to the Provo Airport. I don't even know how this started, Okay. But uh, but there's a, there's a funny piece of this as well. But the song that we would listen to was a uh, was a Kelly Clarkson song. I don't know how. What? Don't ask me how. But Dennis Pitt's favorite movie is also She's Got Game or Mean Girls. Those are his two top movies. So Wait, that, this might help you. Understand. He told us that his favorite. Mo well, we asked some sports. Movie. Yeah, we asked some sports. We should ask some regular movie because I am <laughs> I'm not go I'm not I can't believe he so said this, Mean Girls. This or she Clarkson got game. song is in the that movie. Uh, I don't, I, I don't know if it's in the movie, but somehow it was, it, it became this song. Okay. So we listened to it as loud as we could on the way to the airport before the Oklahoma game in 2009. And it was Kelly Clarkson. My life would suck without you. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. She sang that at Stadium of Fire. Oh my gosh. Hear me out on this. Hear me out on okay. this. Okay. So then we go to Oklahoma and of course we win the game. Yeah. And so the next away game, I think we put, did we play Tulane? I think we played Tulane next. And, uh, and it was like, well, we did this last time and it worked. I guess we have to do it again. And we won again de decisively. And so then the next away game, we're like, well, I guess we <laughs> have to do, do this. And the funny part is that that next away game, coach lamb needed a ride to the airport. And so he rode with us to the airport. <laughs> And he's like shaking his head at us, like, "What are you guys doing?" So, 
Um, I think we did that every game until we lost an away game, uh, which I think well, – actually, I don't remember which away game we lost. Maybe we didn't win – You game. might not have lost an away game that year. You guys were 11-2 and two that year. I'm going to look I'm gonna look up the schedule yeah, now so we know. We lost to TCU at home, and we lost to Florida State at home. So, yeah, yeah we, ne- we didn't lose away games. So, so Kelly, Clarkson Kelly Clarkson was the key? My life would suck without So, you, do you Kelly remember Clarkson. the words? <laughs> uh, I don't – you know, it's been years. <laughs> Been years. I, I probably can only sing them when Dennis is in the car. <laughs> oh my gosh! Wait, Dennis so here, said you'd appre- hit a, you would appreciate that his question. Here's my it. question. So, <laughs> I, t- I told these guys, you know, hey, maybe we can convince you uh, to get your guitar out and play some Jack Johnson for us, like the oh, old days man. up at our house. Yeah, like so, Andrew used to come so up to our days. house. <laughs> we we pull out my guitar. He and I would play some songs, but he inevitably we end up with he could he could hit those Jack Johnson. He had those great. Great guitar chops, and he could do that. And he sounded like Jack Johnson. I mean, that's pretty much how he got girls when he was at BYU. Was with his Jack <laughs> yeah. Johnson stuff. You still My do that? Just ro- she just rolls her eyes at me now. Is she, that doesn't, right? she doesn't give me any attention on that stuff. What? So, you know, she's over. Wait, I, yeah, tell me about it. Did she's you over. get her with that though? <laughs> like originally, did she think it was great? Did you play some Jack Johnson stuff for her, and you kind of got her interested with that, right? You know, I can't really remember. I probably tried, and my wife is the the type who, who it may impress her, but she's not going to let you know that it impresses her. No. And I think that made me like her even more. All right, let yeah. me let me ask you one more follow up to this Kelly Clarkson situation. <laughs> so I'm just trying to visualize two guys that are six five, uh, baddest re- tight end tandem, one of the best in school history. Going to the airport, listening to uh, "My Life Would Suck Without You." Are you singing at the top of your lungs as well, or are you just listening? Uh, of course, singing. That's what I thought. That's, <laughs> we wouldn't have won all those. That games completed the picture. <laughs> that completed the picture of what I was sitting there going. <laughs> uh, you guys had a lot of fun, and you. We did. We did, and again, that's that's why uh, that, you know. I, I got to. T- yeah, go ahead. I, I got to tell you, you're away schedule that year. Whatever you did worked because you just killed people on the road there. It was Clarkson. This is the match. Yeah, Kelly beat, Clarkson. We beat Wyoming that year. Yeah, so at, at Tulane, of course, the race schedule was easy. At UNLV, yeah. which was a 59 21 affair. At San Diego State, 38 um, 28, a little closer. Um, at Wyoming, another 50 point outburst, 52 to zip at Wyoming. At New Mexico, too close, 24 19. Um, and that that was it. So you guys, mm. no wonder you kept singing that song. You were killing people on the road. You know, some people say it's the schedule. I say it's the Kelly Clarkson song. <laughs> I'm going with you on the Clarkson. <laughs> I I, there it. was something magical about that. <laughs> uh, we're with uh, Andrew George. A couple of more questions, and we'll let you go. We appreciate you joining us live from from your home in Colorado. Uh, let's hit on a couple of milestones, and then and then some keys to the game on Saturday. Um, 2008, your first touchdown catch. A one-yarder in a one-point win at Washington. What do you remember? Oh, um, man. I I mean, I remember a lot about the game, about that play in particular. It's just, it was, you know, we motion, we start Dennis out of the wide, you know, out wide, motion him down, and we just kind of down block and then release. And uh, Dennis draws attention to the front pylon, which I think we probably scored on that same play probably six times in my career yeah uh and it was because again he draws the attention to the front pylon and i'm open on the kind of back corner route um but i remember cat just catching the ball and, and, and what i really remember is i wasn't sure if i was in the end zone in the back and so like i caught it and i remember kind of looking down to put my feet down i'm like oh i'm good <laughs> uh and then just being like hey all right touchdown uh you know, I don't know. The That's what that amazing. feels like. So you think, like, of your 11 touchdowns, maybe six of those were on that very same play? Yeah. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Okay. So yeah, so right. you have a multiple touchdown game also in, in 2008 in that 21-3 win against New Mexico. That's your only multiple touchdown game. Um, what do you remember about that one? One of them was the exact same play mm-hmm. as uh, the Washington one. Uh, I think we called it 62 power or something like that. So, yeah. Um, and uh, uh, that one, so so very similar back in the end zone. The other one was uh, uh, just a corner route. I, I want to say it was kind of open field, maybe around the 20-yard line. Um, 
uh, so we were we were maybe kind of in the red zone and cut it right at the front pylon um again wasn't sure if i was going to be in the end zone so as i caught it i kind of turned to, to make sure i was in the end zone but uh but yeah, just again, I was I was still kind of trying to find my place on on that team with so many good receivers and playmakers. So just wanted to make sure every time that Max threw me the ball that I I uh, made the best out of it. Let's go to 2009 and uh, and the play that all of Cougar Nation knows you for against Utah in that overtime win. When Dennis was on the show here uh, a few weeks ago, he made it known that the play call was supposed to go to him and he was open. But Max decided to try and pin it between two defenders who were uh, who were making a play on the ball where you were. Uh, never mind what Dennis said. You got the catch. You run in the end zone. Arms are up in the air. I talked to you about this for an article I wrote. And then the fans come and tackle you, and you're fighting for your life. Yeah. So <laughs> first of all, let me just say that had it been Dennis, he would have been tackled. And yes. He would have hit the ground because how many yards after contact did Dennis actually have in his career? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what those stats are, but um, no, but actually before the play, uh, so I, I align left, which is when we would get in our, our 12 personnel, that's usually where I would go to the left side of the field at our H position. And Dennis would align to the right generally. And right, bef- but, but because we ran this particular play to the field, it was, it was going to go to me. Um, and we might have mirrored it to the boundary. I don't remember. But uh, Max, right be- uh, as we're running out there, he ha- he calls my name and he's about to actually tell me and Dennis to switch sides because he want he he wanted Dennis to be the guy to to catch the ball. I don't know if Max remembers that. Oh wow! I remember that. We'll have to ask Max. And so so he he calls my name and he was like he was like hey he, why don't you sw-? he was like about to say switch with Dennis and I'm like rolling my eyes. I'm like come on man. And, uh, and then he's like, actually, no, just leave it, leave it. Right. So w- whatever <laughs> he felt like, uh, I would probably have the better matchup. Uh, so he was whatever. going, so, he was going over the middle. It was just a matter of, it was going to be you or Dennis. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So, so, uh, the, the interesting part about that play is we'd run it twice earlier in the game. Once would have been for a touchdown. We were in the, the red zone. We were going into score and, um, we had run it and I beat, Steven Sylvester badly and I was wide open and the ball gets tipped at the line of scrimmage. Oh. Um, so it would have been a touchdown earlier in the game. Yeah. I, I don't remember if we had a field goal or whatever uh, there, but we ran it later in the game, kind of open field midfield again, beat him badly on this same kind of little snag double, double move. Um, so when we get into that scenario, that situation, um, he, I, I knew that he knew what was coming. Yeah. And, and he knew what I was going to try and run, that I was going to try and kind of double move back to the middle of the field. And so I knew if I inside released him, he was going to hold me to no end to make sure that I didn't get the ball. If I outside released him, he would never let me get back to the middle of the field. So I just like split second decision. I'm like, okay, what do I do here? How do I run this route? And I just bull rush him. I just bull rush him for three yards and try and do a little throw to the outside. Not too much. So I didn't get a penalty, but uh, back to the middle of the field. Max sticks with it, throws the ball, uh, and of course, create just enough separation. Uh, Sylvester sells out to try and tip yeah. the ball. It, you know, doesn't go for the tackle. Same with the, the safety. They were running that bracket coverage uh, to try and take away anything to the middle, whether it was me or Dennis. And uh, yeah, I mean, managed to stay on my feet, and that was it. So when in that play did it go from euphoria to a fight for my life to get off the field as everyone charged and your teammates dogpiled and and it was on. Well, as as I remember, uh, I think it was JJ D. Luigi who got to me first and literally like tackles me to the ground, right? And then from there, it's just like a flood of people on top of me and I can't move. <laughs> uh, I wish I would have run away from all these guys because all they did was inflict pain upon me. Uh, but uh, I got so I I have a I still have a torn labrum in my right shoulder, and so my arm got caught in and this position is not a great position for my arm to be in with right. that, and so my arm gets caught like way up high behind me with people laying on it, and I thought my shoulder was going to pop out, and then I couldn't breathe, and it was just what a moment. I was like, dude, I, I don't know what's going to happen here, and 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 all I could think of was all these people from the stands are obviously rushing the field and how many people are piling on right now and how long is it going to take for them to get off of me? 
And so, well, uh, Max said yeah. he was down there with you, and he thought he was. He thought that was it for him. He thought he was going to suffocate to death. He couldn't yeah. breathe. Yeah, that's what, that's the way I felt. I was like, man, <laughs> this might turn from triumph to tragedy. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was triumph, it's, and it's it lives it's, it's in one, infamy, it's, and it gets played. Year after year after year, it's 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 considered one of the greatest plays in BYU history. How many times has your uh, 12-year-old seen that play, and does he believe it was actually you? Uh, I I think he believes it's me. He 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 gives me a hard time now. No, he he <laughs> thinks it's pretty cool. In fact, I'm in his room right now, and he has a big poster oh, nice. of it in his room. Uh, my wife took it down the other day because she wanted him to have a more mature room, and, and I made her put it back up. <laughs> nice. So <laughs> that's does, awesome. Does, does he ever tell you um, that you don't know what you're doing? Cause it's been a long time since you played. Oh yeah. All the time. I know nothing. I'm, I'm an old timer oh. to him. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I try and give him, him pointers here and there. I probably overcoach him just because I'm a, I'm a dad like that. Well, have him uh, call us, have him call us and we'll remind we'll, him. We'll how remind good him of who you are. Like, <laughs> so, so Andrew Kellen was playing quite, I don't know. He was like 10 or 11. I was trying to teach him how to to throw an inside screen, and I wanted him to set pass, like do his drop and set, so that the D line would believe it was pass. And then once he set and draws him to him to to float a little bit and then dump it back into the fullback for a middle screen. Yeah. And he, I was trying to tell him he did it wrong like three times. On the third time, I'm like, Kellen, listen to me. I need you to set up first. And he turns around in front of the whole team. He goes, Dad. Shut up! You haven't played for a long time. That's what he said to me. I was like, you know what? Get out! I like out. You're out. I took him out and I said, guys, I'm in, because I was I could still run without blowing out a hamstring at that point. Hey, Andrew, give us three keys. Uh, we have five quick questions for you after this, but give us three keys to a BYU win. And Bluesville won on our live stream tonight around the globe uh, has asked you to. Put Kelly Clarkson on your playlist for this, this Saturday. Week for sure, with Cougs around the, the road. Cougs need that. We can, need all the good karma idea. we this can get. This is a road game. Perfect timing. Yeah, play will it. you commit to that? I will commit to that. Okay. I will play it. In fact, I'm going to play the song, and I'm going to record it and send it to Dennis Pitta so that he has to listen to it. Fantastic. He, if I think if the two of you listen to it I pregame think, for this game, BYU can only win, and they probably score in the 50s because that seemed to be the trend when you guys played that. Okay. All it's right. out we, there in the universe. We got you committed. Beautiful. All right, three things. What what three things need to happen? Uh, third down conversion, number one defensively. Um, I think we have to be significantly better. I'd like I'd like to see us uh, hold them to, I'm going to say, under 40% on third down conversion. Okay. Um, I, I think that would be a, a big improvement from, from last week sure. and, uh, uh, and really important. Um, I'd like to see us have a hundred yard rusher. Um, I think controlling the line of scrimmage, especially uh, against an opponent like Liberty is really important. So I would say control the line of scrimmage and have a 100 yard rusher uh, and turnover battle. Um, mm. I think if we win the turnover battle, I think that's something Liberty has struggled with. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think it's very realistic for us to win the turnover battle. And so those are my three okay. keys. I mean, those are very typical, but I think those are uh, those are what win games. Three keys in Clarkson. I like it. They're, they're Liberty's touchdown to interception ratio has not been good this year. They've been playing young guys, and they've been giving up some picks. So there's the opportunity to win that turnover battle. I think you're right on. All right, you ready for five questions? By the way, uh, we'll judge you forever on these answers, so no yep. sweat. Great. So, favorite <laughs> favorite sports movie? Uh, um, favorite sports movie? It's one I actually watched not too long ago, so I'm going to say it because it's on top of my mind. But uh, a league of their own. A oh, league of their wow. own. Wow, about yeah. women's professional baseball he, league. Tom Hanks is awesome in that movie. <laughs> I've got to say, with all the guests we've had on the show, it's the first one that's gone with a league of their own. Yeah, that is. A, that's like that Madonna's in that, Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah. Go back and watch it. It's hilarious. Those are yeah. all Kelly Clarkson's friends. Yes, you see they the are. Yeah, exactly, there. right? So, <laughs> okay, so now here's here's an interesting one. Favorite band or singer? Um, favorite band or singer? Um, I've liked uh, John Mayer for a long time and a lot because I like playing his guitar stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, I was thinking it was either going to be Jack Johnson, John Mayer, or Kelly Clarkson. So I, I, yeah. I knew Kelly it was going to be one of those three. For sure. John Mayer. So favorite breakfast cereal? Uh, Golden Graham. Nice. Okay, That's thank goodness. Like, 
we give people a big hassle if they choose a healthy cereal without sugar on it. So we're glad <laughs> to see that you take the Golden Grams, golden which are just way. coated That's in brown sugar. answer for me. Golden Grams yep. all the way. Fantastic. Nice. Favorite hamburger place? Oh, this is, uh, okay, this is high on uh, our, our family's conversation list. Okay, so I went to Whataburger this weekend for yeah. the first time. Yeah, they, I haven't been there for a long a time. In, yeah, They opened a couple in Colorado Springs. Uh, I, You know, it was fine. I didn't didn't love it. I know it's probably nostalgic for some people. And they I had one it, in Texas my on my mission. That's where I like Whataburger. Yeah, what kind no, of a I'm name not, of a yeah, hamburger sure place is that? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So it was. Uh, so that is not my number one. But it got the the topic <laughs> going in our family of what our favorite burger what burger is. And I think my favorite because it's the same every time and the consistency is the exact same and they do such a great job of putting it together is uh, a double double from in and out in and out i knew you Ooh, were going double there. double and that's yeah it's, it's so consistent every time i know exactly what i'm going to get you know what I, be put together. I the other you. day i wasn't feeling very good and i just was feeling sorry for myself <laughs> and, I, and i went to burger king and got a whopper with cheese i haven't done that in like 10 years was it outstanding it was great yeah. i had a big way. mac the other day <laughs> it just was cause, awesome just because i could so okay your favorite thing about dennis pitta this is number five and just know that Dennis is probably going to respond in some form. Can I tell you my favorite story about Dennis? Yeah, sure. That, does that yeah. work? That works. I, it's, a, it's brief. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be fast. The Clark, by the way, the Clarkson story is going to be tough to top. Yeah, that's and pretty that's good. That's pretty good, too. But this <laughs> also, again, you're getting a feel for why coming back and playing that 09 season was so great. So in 09, we're playing at UNLV. Uh, Dennis uh, had a hard time controlling himself at the uh the football buffets let's we'll just say <laughs> and we there was a running joke because in 2008 he gained he gained quite a few pounds if you watch him at the end of that year i think he was like 275 oh my um, he was big and maybe 270 maybe that's too much but he was he was he was much bigger than he should have been uh, and so to, uh, so that was 08 so 09 we were always joke with him like well it's dennis you know, you, you're leaving dollars on the table here if you gain too much weight, you know. We, so we were always trying to keep him healthier, right? But he gave in this one time down at UNLV. We, we, he and I went to our hotel room, and we, we fell asleep. We took a nap, uh, and we woke up, and we missed dinner. And so we always had these cheeseburger snacks yeah. um, as a second meal. And Dennis came down and got four full to-go boxes just filled with, the most unhealthy stuff you can imagine. We <laughs> took it back to our room. He ate it. I'm not even joking you. Within five minutes, he ate all four boxes, then proceeded <laughs> to go into the bathroom and throw it all up because he made himself sick. Nice. He ate till he was sick. How come he, he didn't share any with you guys? He, was, he ate till he was literally sick, and he went and he threw up. Oh, my gosh. That's next level stuff. That's <laughs> that's next level stuff. That's a good that's a good uh, a memory. Dennis of your could friend eat. Dennis. That's, that's one of my favorite things about. Yeah, him. I love I, I, he I could love definitely eat. There you go. So Andrew, it was worth the wait to have you on the Wise Guys. We hope you'll come back on with us uh, again. And good luck to your yeah. We're wishing, your football we're wishing team you the very the best in your coaching career with your seventh grade team this year. We'll be monitoring your progress. <laughs> Sounds good. Hopefully, we improve. All right, remember, you got Clarkson on Saturday. And, and then you got to send it to, to Dennis, Dennis so he does it too. And uh, and yeah. then we'll watch the game, and, and we'll see if Clarkson, again, if the if, magic and if, and still happens. if they happens. score in the 50s and win, we're going to give you guys 100% of the credit. You what got it. it. Perfect. What, what did Austin it. Colley say? He said if you're doing what's right off, on and off, off the field, field, magic, magic happens. happens yeah. Or if you're listening to Clarkson on the way to the airport, magic, magic happens. Magic happens on the road. So there you go. I don't Absolutely. even know that song. We'll I'm going to listen to it after the show. Andrew, so. give uh, give our best to your family, yes. and uh, we're proud of all you're doing and how you represent BYU, and and, uh, and we we thank you for coming on with Thanks, us tonight. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate awesome. it. You bet, guys. Thanks for having me on.